My name is Jessica Zweifak. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Seaver Autism Center for Research and Treatment. Today I'm going to be talking to you about evidence-based interventions for autism spectrum disorder. The interventions that will be discussed today have been proven efficacious in research studies. This will be an overview of treatments to consider. Of course, treatments must be tailored to each individual and may depend on an individual's level of functioning. Applied Behavioral Analysis, or ABA, is a comprehensive treatment approach that has evidence both for teaching skills and reducing behavior problems in autism. ABA is based on Skinner's behavioral reinforcement theories and involves the identification and manipulation of antecedents, behaviors, and consequences. ABA is always data-driven so that providers can make decisions about interventions and what to change based on selected outcomes. ABA can be both structured and more naturalistic. Early intensive behavioral intervention is a very structured form of ABA. It takes place in a one-on-one -on -one therapist-child format and involves discrete trial training in which a therapist uses reinforcers for each skill one by one and then these skills are built upon. Naturalistic forms of ABA are also based on behavioral principles. In Pivotal Response Training, or PRT, skills are taught in natural interactions and routines by following the child's lead and using what's motivating to each child. Similarly, in the Early Start Denver model, play is used to teach skills to very young children. There's a large focus on the relationship and development. JASPER targets core social and interactive skills, again, using a naturalistic approach. TEACH is another important comprehensive intervention and structured teaching is the critical piece. Environments are organized with clear, concrete visual information. This can be done in a home, school, or job setting. These environments make the world more meaningful and more predictable for the learner. Some of the interventions I just mentioned can target social skills in younger or less verbal children. There have been other programs developed that specifically target social skills in children, adolescents, and adults with ASD. These interventions focus on higher order social skills, such as theory of mind, social conversation, and reading emotions in other people. They follow a cognitive behavioral therapy framework. This requires that participants are verbally fluent and cognitively able to engage in the material. Peers and SeaverNet have both been studied, and there's evidence that supports these groups in verbal children, adolescents, and adults with ASD. Social stories are scripts describing different situations that can improve our social understanding around particular situations or things that make us uncomfortable. These will be covered further in the video on behavior management. They're important when we're thinking about interventions for social skills. There are also naturalistic play therapies to consider, such as relationship development intervention, which teaches social skills through activities. It's also important to consider other interventions for symptoms of ASD, including those that target language development, sensory challenges, and increasing independence of activities of daily living. Comprehensive evaluations of language deficits by a speech and language pathologist are recommended. In order to increase verbal language or work on the pragmatics of language, speech and language therapy is critical. Picture exchange systems, iPad programs, and specific speech interventions, such as prompt or verbal behavior therapy, can all be considered as alternatives. Occupational therapy should be considered to address any sensory symptoms, deficits in fine motor development, and also in order to increase independence in activities of daily living. Physical therapy might also be needed to target deficits in gross motor development. Finally, medication can also sometimes be used to augment these behavioral therapies. I hope that this module on evidence-based interventions has been helpful. For more information, please visit our website or visit the resources listed on the last slide of this page. Thank you for your time.